Chuck, some time ago, we did an explainer on being speciesist. I don't know if you remember that. Speciesist. If you're, you know, you can be sexist, racist, you can be speciesist. Right. And I, I don't remember everything I talked about it, but one example would be, you know, we all, or many people, uh, uh, ecologically conscious people will buy line caught tuna. Line caught tuna, and you know why? Of course, yeah, because the net caught tuna uh, does a great deal of harm to uh, the cutest animal <laughs> that swims no. and breathes air. Yeah, none other than our reigning champion of the dolphin. Yeah, flipper, flipper, yeah, the flipper. dolphin. Yes, yeah. Right. yeah. So it's air breathing, so it gets trapped in the net and it can't breathe and it dies. And so you buy line caught tuna. You don't kill the dolphins. And, but, right. of course, when you buy line caught tuna, you're killing the tuna. <laughs> so so this is this is a speciesist decision you're making, all right? right? Preferring to kill one kind of animal instead of another for whatever your reasons may be. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, you, you when like I like this, let me just say you like this theme, I know. <laughs> Because uh, you have a new book coming out, which you were kind enough to send me in advance. And uh, I sent you an advance copy? Do yeah. I, why did, did I do that? Okay. Uh, you sent me the transcript. It was great. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, early. Oh, yes. That yes, was yes, way yes. back, before, way back. Yeah, before it was. Uh, before yeah, I was you even to got it into on print. It. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got a mm -hmm. chapter on there uh, that basically discusses this, which is great. Yeah, a lot of that early thinking went into this chapter. And so I want to add a little. You didn't even plug your book. What? what is wrong with you? I just mentioned that you got a new book coming out. You're like, oh, yes, of course. Yeah, a lot of thinking. When no, bro, I'm setting you okay. up. I'm like, okay. yo, it's called Starry okay. Messenger, Starry by the Messenger. way, people. Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. Yes. And it takes whole sectors of our lives and shows you what they look like if you're scientifically literate yeah. and have a cosmic perspective on it. It was truth and beauty, uh, life yeah. and death. Right. War mind and peace. And mind, mind and body. War right. and peace, which I changed, by the way, because it was mostly people in conflict, but not necessarily killing each other. Although I do a lot of discussion about war and peace. So that. I changed the title of that since you saw it. And it's now Conflict and Resolution, which is a broader okay, sense of how people uh, deal with it. It's exploration and discovery. Uh, yeah, so there are all these kept, things Did you keep gender and do. identity? Yes, I did, Gent. That you remember that gender and identity. Another one, color and race. Yeah, I went That's there. Right. Yeah, I went there. And, an, went there. and another one, meatarians and vegetarians. And vegetarians. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's one of my favorite because okay. I, I was reading that and I was like, Ooh, this this dude trying to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> trying to get canceled. No. No. By, the no, by the vegetarians, because no. you know how you know. First of all, they're very very moody. Because they're hungry. <laughs> they're hungry. Let's be honest. Very moody people. <laughs> Guys, so they're angry. I'm right. They're just they're angry, angry all the time. I'm like, bro, you know what? Here, calm down. Eat a burger. Have a cheeseburger. Yeah. Have a cheeseburger. Eat a burger and let's talk, okay? Take it easy. And by the way, veggie people. These are all mm -hmm. jokes, okay? They're jokes. Okay. I'm very happy. I'm very happy for you to live that lifestyle, and quite frankly, you're uh, taking a great burden off of not only e the ecology but uh, climate mitigation. So, yeah, okay. okay. There, there you go. go. Are you happy? Stuck, in fact, is a is a bit. <laughs> okay, now back to the jokes. Back okay. to the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no. So the meatarians and vegetarians chapter. Yeah. The book is not. People will think it's rife with opinions, but it's not. The no. book is just what the world looks like right. when you're scientifically literate and you know how to think about data and information and, and analysis and, and also what it looks like if, from above, if, right. from a cosmic perspective. And I occasionally throw in some aliens, right. aliens who have no preconceived notion of who and what we are, and they just observe. Yeah. They right. just observe. As so, they call it, the um, the dispassionate Third party observer. Observer, correct. And so in one example, I just imagined, suppose, um, well, let me work my way there for a moment. Okay, so this this landed in the book. Uh, let's say you don't like killing animals. Right. Maybe that's why you're a vegetarian. Okay, nothing wrong with that as a 
point of philosophy. And many such people who live in homes might have mouse traps in their basement that are humane. You've heard of humane mouse of traps. Course. It doesn't snap the neck. Oh. Uh, the, all right. Catch and it, release. It trap. Cats catch and release. And you got to get down there quickly because they don't they dry up pretty fast um, in the in the trap. If you if you're not there checking on it every few days. So you you trap one, you so there's the cute fuzzy little fellow mammal, and then you release it into the wild and you feel good. Right. All right. But if you analyze this, you, you realize that the life expectancy of the mouse in the wild is between nine and eighteen months because they are the tastiest of snacks for all manner of woodland predators. Delicious like owls and hawks and crows and foxes. And right. so what you've done is shorten the life of the mouse by offering them up to predators. Whereas if you let it alone in your basement, it would live up to six years. Mm -hmm. So if you really cared about the life of that mouse, you would welcome it into your basement and have it bring all its friends while it's at it. Right. So, so this notion that you're against killing animals, maybe you're okay with them dying by other means, but it's not a fully thought through philosophy by just saving the life of the mouse instead of snapping its neck because you'd rather see it getting swallowed whole by an owl. Because the deal is it's not really about the mouse. It's about you. Oh, oh, see, and how you feel. It's okay. how you feel. It's why you okay. know you save the mouse after that. You don't give it right. you don't give it's a rat's a ass what happened to the mouse. Right. Mouse right. is dead. Good luck, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> so so I thought when I was writing the book, I tr every chapter I tried to offer what an what we look like we what we might look like to aliens. Right. Okay. So imagine aliens that are that uh photosynthesize like plants. Right. Okay. So they're actually plant based sentient life instead of meat based, meat -based. sentient life. Okay. Right. So, so they, they thrive on sun lamps that right. are right. in their ship or right. on their host star. All right. So nobody ever kills anything. They just right. sort of they just absorb lay out in the sun and absorb the light. Mm. There it is. Oh, I gotta okay. tell you, today's sunlight is delicious, guys. You gotta get it. <laughs> Woo! I don't know what's happening with all this UV, but it's amazing. It's just oh, my compliments to the chef. Right. <laughs> Needs a little more salt, though. Do you oh, think? Exactly. Right. <laughs> so, so if they come to Earth, like what would they observe? So the funny part is they would see the meat eaters and wouldn't really fully understand them, right. all right? They're these meat-based creatures killing other meat-based creatures for their survival. But they won't really care because they're only, they're only going to care about their own brethren, which are the, the plants. Because they've heard that there's a great biodiversity of plant life on Earth. Which is this why is they in care. Their, this is on their, in their tour guide, right? right? So they come to, they see the rainforests, and right. they see the jungles, and they see all, and they see the the, the sequoia trees in, mm -hmm. in the Pacific Northwest, and they're just delight in this. And then they find a subset of humans who specifically target plants mm. to slaughter. Oh, y'all got and, to die. And this... This this would kind of freak them out because these are their felt, these are their brethren. And so here they are cultivating plants to harvest them and eat them. And by the way, they'll feel sorry for our plants because our plants can't run away because they're sentient and they can like walk around sentient in ways that we and ambulatory. Think of. Right. And ambulatory, that's the word I'm looking. Thank you. They can get around, whereas our plants can't. So they watch humans a particular subset of humans walk up to a plant mm. and decapitate it, okay? Right. To be consumed. Okay, well, fine. The, what They can't, but it's it goes deeper, all right? What they observe is that this subset of humans, we call them vegetarians, specifically target the reproductive organs of the plants, right? The seeds, the nuts, the yes. berries, the yes. flowers, the all the things the plant is just trying to make another version of itself, and we reach in there, snatch it, and eat it. You so savages! This would look, this would look particularly barbaric to them, but wait, there's more 
Then they they go by the produce aisle at Whole Foods and or any large grocery store would have this. And then they see what people are especially buying. Right. They're bu- it, there is a there's a bit of infanticide going yeah, on. Exactly. Infe- why? Well, because the people are seeking out baby spinach, the baby versions of everything and the bean sprouts. So so that they, they, they would just completely freak. And they they run away and leave Earth as fast as they can, or they bring their armies to defend right. the plants, <laughs> or they'd end up in a salad because hopefully they didn't, hopefully they didn't land next to these vegetarians because. So it's just another way to look at what you're doing as a vegetarian. It's a life form that occupies a sector of the tree of life, and you have decided that because we are, if it's for animal safety and pain and all of this, rather than through, uh, through the environment. Okay. Because of course, meat eaters are much more costly to the environment than plant eaters. All right. Um, and I, of course I go there in the book and describe these differences and how and why and what the consequences are. Um, I'm just saying that you, um, if the a cosmic perspective makes you look at things fresh because someone coming in seeing our tree of life doesn't have a, a species bias coming in at exactly. all right and they're going to wonder so here you are saving the mouse in your basement okay but what's your house made of well it's made of the wood from 50 trees that might have lived 100 years but they were cut down halfway through their lives each tree produces 15 times the mass of the mouse in oxygen every day. But right. no, you cut them down to make your floorboards, your wall panels, your two by fours, your structural members, your wall sidings. This is what you've done with trees. And by the way, trees, they, like I said, they can live 50, 100 years. Some live a thousand years. They're yeah. home for all manner, all manner of forest of- creatures. The right. birds, squirrels, um, uh, insects, and um, even other uh, even other flora, other other flora, correct, growing in and around and on them, That's and right. so uh, we can ask the question: Who do you think nature cares more about? Right, the tree That's, right. that might live a thousand years or a hundred years, right. or the one ounce mouse that you just saved from getting its nap, its neck snapped. So uh, now I don't care what you think after all of this i mean i do i care in the sense that i'm an educator and i want you to be fully informed but if you're going to run around choosing no <laughs> if you're going to run around choosing one species over another look at the big picture first and then go pick and choose what you want to eat and what you don't want to eat and what you want to kill yeah. and what you don't want to kill I, you know i'm i get it a lot of it has to do with consciousness and a lot of it has to do with um how people feel a uh, philosophy, how they feel. Philosophy. It's the people philosophy. who say, the people who say we value our lives because we have a beating heart and then the right. trees don't. And then I'll say, maybe it's not that the tree is missing a beating heart. Maybe the tree simply doesn't need, need a, a beating, beating heart. heart. Because that's, the tree a, does have a circulatory system. It, it, uh, and indeed it, it does. It does. If you if you cut a tree, does it not bleed? And it if you cloak does. a tree, does it not suffocate? That's if right. you cut off its nutrients, does it not wither? That's right. So so to turn around and say the the mouse I care about, but cut down the tree because I have there's a home I want to build. Just rebalance that and come back to the conversation, and you'd be surprised how differently you might be thinking. Right. So, or be like that, me and just eat mice. They're delicious. <laughs> no, you, you you fight for the mice with the with the, with the right. owl. Right. That's my juicy mouse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Chuck. That's that's another explainer there. I like just it. What the, what the vegetarian world might look like to photosynthesizing to alien. aliens? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All, all right. So this has been yet another explainer. Of Star Talk. Thanks, Chuck, for always being there. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. <laughs>